What's up guys? We are back with another Animal Warriors of the Kingdom review and we're taking a look at the big boy from Wave 2. We have got General Thane on deck and I'd be lying if I said this wasn't my most anticipated figure in this wave because, well, he's so different. He's like two to three times the size of the other figures because pretty much everything in the line so far is fairly similar, right? This guy is huge and he's a different kind of animal too, so he's got a lot different going for him. He comes in fairly similar style packaging to the rest of the line, it just happens to be bigger. So you've got the white uh, box here, you've got the figure in the window, you've got that orange backer back there, you've got uh, artwork on both spines, and then the back of the box gives us a different shot of that artwork, a larger shot of it, as well as a bio for our giant ape figure. So yeah, let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our AWOC General Thane you know, again, a figure that I've really been looking forward to because he's so different, right? Like I said, he's really different compared to every other figure in this line. Well, until we get that PowerCon repaint he is, but he, he's right now a unique mold for all intents and purposes. He's pretty similar to the other figures if you've, if you've gotten any of these so far, but he's also his own thing too. He's not exactly like all the others in this line, but he feels familiar if that makes any sense. So now let's see what he can do, see how he moves around, all that good stuff. We got a head that can look up really, really good. It's a hinge. It's a hinged ball peg, uh, so he can look up. I mean, that's about as perfect as it's going to get. That's literally 90 degrees right up. He looks down really good still as well. Not a whole lot of tilt. That's probably the one thing on this figure I wish he had was more range for tilting that head because, you know, he's lurched forward. So turning the head does look kind of weird at times. We've got arms that go out. You know, out to the side really well, even with this armor in the way. You've got a bicep swivel up there. We've got rotating elbows with a mega, mega deep cut elbow. Like it goes all the way under that armor, which is really nice because it hides the cut in many ways, but it adds, I mean, that's better than 90 degrees. It's a huge, huge arm too. He's got hinges and they're really, really, really tight on these guys. He's got hinges and rotation at the wrist. You've got a ratcheted ab crunch and you're gonna hear it. He goes backwards one. And then he'll go forward about that far. Pretty decent for such a big beefy guy. Waist twist. Legs go out at the hips pretty decently. Kick forward all right. You do have a thigh twist here. And then you've also got swiveling knees and a single joint which gives you about 90. It's about 90 degrees. And then down at the ankles, he, he does have some hindrances because of this armor. It kind of makes things a little tight. You can rock fairly decently though, and then you've still got some room for uh, your ankle hinge down there as well. So the one thing he really doesn't have compared to the other figures is that he doesn't have a butterfly joint. Probably could have benefited from it, but at the same time, it might have messed with his weight distribution too. He's obviously really, really, really heavy, uh, very, very solid, and that's probably the, one of the bigger things to mention is that he is incredibly solid, but he also doesn't feel, you know, like he's going to topple over or anything. Weight distribution is really nice, and overall, I think he moves really well, especially with how odd shape he is. He's very barrel chested, huge, huge arms, but he also has tremendous range. And again, I can't get over uh, these elbows and he's got pretty solid range at that ab crunch. Now, as far as the overall look and feel, the visuals, I think this guy looks great. And I've been looking forward to this figure for a number of reasons, but a huge chunk of that was just the aesthetics, how this guy looks and how he integrates into the, the actual line itself. Cause you know, I've said it a few times already, he is very different. This is not your standard AWOC figure, and while he's not enormous, I mean, he's a big figure, he's not tall. He's really, really wide. He's really, really wide. I can't stress that enough, uh, but there's a lot of figure here, but in this direction. So he's going to work really well to integrate as just this big bruiser figure without being some ultra enormous tall gorilla at the same time. And I, and I think it works really well here because this is still like a telltale AWOC figure. If you've got a few other ones, you kind of know some of the hallmarks of the line. And this is all here. The sculpt is there, the paint is there, and this armor and how it integrates into this figure is very much something that's gonna tie it into the other figures too. Not to mention the fact that I really like the way they handle the armor when it comes to the asymmetry of it all and the colors. These color schemes, they're kind of wacky, you know, they're some are kind of bright and really kind of goofy in some ways. You know, this is a big gorilla wearing like a slightly rosy and blue armor. 
but the color combos work really well. And this metallic finish that they've gotten on this softer plastic does look really good. Uh, so I've been a big, big fan of the armor schemes through this line so far. And Thane's is, is really close. It's very similar to other figures. It just happens to be bigger uh, because he is, well, he's this big, big old beefcake. But I really do like him. And, you know, of course, we'll do size comparisons. But he is a big figure. And I think that is, of course, going to add to my enjoyment because... You know, I've kind of been on a big chunky figure kick lately, uh, but he does have a lot of heft. He's really heavy. That's a big way uh, to kind of describe him as well. He's a heavy figure. He's not super tall, but he's got some, some width and he's got some weight. And then we've got our head sculpt up here, which ultimately kind of how I feel about Pale when I first got him in hand was... I was really impressed with how they managed to get the expression on his face, and Thane is really similar. He's got the eyebrow thing going. It gives him a little bit of a furrowed brow, but kind of like a quizzical look also. And I really like it. I'm enjoying the expressions that these figures have. And this one definitely works here. His head is, you know, really broad. He's got some good paint up there as far as that lighter gray, the actual skin tone. You got your ears poking out. And then our eyes are really clean and crisp, but it all goes back to kind of the character they're building when it comes to getting that sculpt in there, get that expression, and it really makes, uh, for just a cool looking figure, kind of rounds things out for me as he kind of integrates into this set of figures. Now, as far as some size comparisons go, we've got uh, Thane here in the middle, obviously. We've got the Pale from A Walk Wave 1 here on the left, and we've got a Xylernian Guard uh, from Mythic Legions. And like I said, this is a big figure, but he's not tall. He's beefy and he's really wide. A lot of that comes down to his humongous barrel chest and these absolutely massive arms. I mean, his arms are almost as big in many ways as an actual figure. So he's got a lot of width to him, but he's not, you know, he's not 12 inches tall or anything like that. Uh, let's do a, let's do a Marvel Legends figure. Let's swap out the guard. And here is Forge. You can get an idea of how he looks with a Legends, a Hasbro figure. Let's move Pale aside, and here is a figure arts. Here is the Saiyan raised on Earth Goku. You know, our standard Goku. A good middle-of-the-road figure for figure arts. And let's move Forge aside, and here is a Super 7 Turtle. There's Leo. And then let's do one more. Let's do a... Let's do a Mezco. Here's the Mez Conan for a 112 Mezco 112 figure. So as you can see, he's going to look really good with 7-inch stuff and I think with 6-inch stuff because he's not super tall, so he still will integrate into the AWOC line, but also just about anything else. But he's still going to have a lot of shelf presence because he is so wide and just so thick. Now, as far as accessories goes, Thane comes with a pretty decent spread. You've kind of got a little bit of everything here. And to start with, we do get an extra head sculpt. And this is this is probably going to be my favorite of the two because, like I said, I really like the armor when it comes to these figures. I like the I like the look and the feel of them, and I really like this metallic finish. And I really, really like this blue. So uh, Thane gets a like a war helmet done up in the same blue that matches this uh, pad over here on his arm but he gets a different expression so he's a much more angry expression you get like a snarling uh, look on the mouth but I, I really like that I, I like the helmet tying into the rest of his armor and that blue again just absolutely does it for me we do get some extra hands uh, he's got gripping hands on him in the box we get two extra sets one of them is a set of like style posy. They're gripping ish hands, but they're not like grippy, grippy hands. And then we get a set of big old gorilla fists also. And then you also get his signature weapon. We get this kind of like almost like steampunkish, like Warhammer, which I really like. It's got sort of a bronzy color uh, to the actual metal parts of it, it's all pitted and worn. And then you've got these blue wraps on there. And it's also got some size to it. You know, it goes up to about his shoulder. Uh, but I really like this design. Again, kind of kind of steampunkish almost. Looks like it's got like some gears, you know, some moving parts in there too. Uh, but this is a really cool weapon. That's, that is the only weapon he comes with though. Everything else he's going to have to pummel with these fists. So he doesn't come with a ton of stuff. But he comes with, you know, like I said, a little bit of everything. You get a head, you get some hands, and you get a really cool weapon. So yeah, overall, I'm really happy with this guy. I know that he maybe isn't the most articulated figure in the line. Well, not maybe. He definitely isn't the most articulated figure in this line. But I kind of knew that going into it, right? He's big, he's beefy, he's bulky. But he still does have some good range. I'm really happy with those elbows in particular. The super deep cut really does help to add some range to those arms and make him a little bit more dynamic. 
but it's all about the look. It's about the size and how he fits into this line. And he's got, he's got this really imposing shelf presence because he is so big. Again, he's not super tall, but he's super wide. So he's big in a, he's big in a kind of an unconventional way when it comes to toys, because he has such odd proportions, slightly stubby legs. And then he's got these humongous arms and this big, big chest. I really like just how unique he is. And then of course he comes with some really solid accessories here. Not a ton of stuff, but pretty much everything I really need. So that's going to do it for this look at the Animal Warriors of the Kingdom, General Thane. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.